I hope I don't bore you all too much. I do have a habit of doing this, so let me just go over some peripheries or stuff. Here we go. Right. Okay. So, the ground that I'm doing it, the grass is already on its way out because it's been quite dry in Shropshire. So I had the hose pipe out and I've given it a bit of a water because it could set the ground on fire. Um, but it gives it a chance of coming back. You can see where I've run other engines in the past. Ho-hum, it does make me popular. <coughs> so if we hit, let me just check the time. And the time, oh, 31 minutes. That'll do. I think it's fair that we start now. Right, so um, you have to bear with me a bit. I'm going to reverse the camera a sec. There you go. You have to bear with me a bit because uh, I'm using my phone to do this, uh, Facebook Live. I'm not an expert by any stretch. And I can only see little icons, so I don't know. I don't know who's on and what and whether I can see. I can see Rob Guy's there. I at Mont. Um, anyway, so uh, if I can, if I can, because ah, the sun's on the screen, if I can uh, answer some comments or whatever, I will, but don't be offended if I can't. Okay, so let's start off. Uh, let's get on with it. I'll do a tour of the engine. Um, I think I've pretty much got all my facts right with it. So, um, and uh, I first, I bought this probably three years ago, only run it a handful of times. Um, with the intention of putting it in a car and that's not happened because a Concorde engine's got in the way but there we go so uh, just bear with me I'm going to put it back to that so here we have it uh, Rolls-Royce Gem from a Lynx helicopter um, so those of you that don't know it is it's a gas turbine um, gas turbines uh, are a family of different types of engines. So the engine that we run yesterday was a turbojet. Um, this is a turbo shaft. So let's just very basically go over it. So this is actually our sucky sucky end. Just in there, if I don't know if you can see that, there you go, that's the compressor blades. And the focus isn't great, but there we go, you get the idea. That's the suction end. Uh, it's a twin spool engine with a third spool power turbine, so I'll explain that in a minute. And that end is the exhaust end. If I go up there, that's the hot end. Both ends are quite dangerous. Um, and with jets, believe it or not, usually the noisiest end is the uh, sucky end, not the jetty end. But there we go. So what happens... Uh, Air is drawn in here, in the front of the engine, that's the front. Oh right, let me stop. So, Lynx helicopter has two of these engines. Let's go some details. They're mounted on, on the roof and they have two engines, so if you get an engine failure, one engine can continue to, uh, helicopter can continue to fly without any issues, although obviously reduced performance. So, uh, I don't know whether this is a port or starboard engine. I think it's a port engine. So if I was stood behind the helicopter now, that would be the engine on the left-hand side. And just so you know, this would have been the exhaust and it would have been, I haven't got the ring on it, but that would have been mounted like that. So the exhaust goes out to the side. And of course the engine over to the right of it, the exhaust would be pointing over to the right-hand side, not the left as that one, sorry. Yeah, you get, you get what I mean. So, the way that this worked, we have a starter motor here, starts the spinning of the engine, and this is your low pressure compressor at the front. So that's sucking in a bit of, uh, sucking in a bit of air at low pressure. Uh, there's a few stages, it compresses it, then it goes to another um, uh, core called the high pressure compressor or the HP core. And that, that is a separate moving shaft with a bearing that sits on top of the low pressure shaft, if that makes sense. So you can get uh, higher compression ratios. So it's like a twit, so it's a twin spool gas producer. And then about here in the engine is a power turbine. And I guess the way to think of a power turbine is 
blown on a windmill and then there's a reduction gearbox and that gives you a shaft output so you're looking at that and going that's great but where's the shaft output surely it should be at the back where the power turbine is but no weirdly that shaft goes all the way through the engine and comes out to here which is this bit here if you can see that so that is your shaft output so the gearbox of the helicopter would be here if that makes sense and that would couple up two engines so basically the output shaft is right in the air intake which maybe seems a bit weird but that's how it is uh, what else no LJ it's not live now it was recorded yesterday um, right so what else have we got uh, not as thirsty as the engine we run yesterday um, yesterday um, I used that was the, the two runs however long they were were approximately I think 48 litres something like that that we used yesterday in those two runs uh, this isn't a thrust engine this is a shaft engine um, it's designed to produce shaft horsepower so uh, what I haven't told you is that this little unit there and it's not that big weighs about 180 kilos is good for a thousand horsepower emergency power I believe is about 1120 ho uh, shaft horsepower so quite a pokey little engine um, I did want to well at some point I will put it in a car but god it's, that's another rainy day project I'm running out of time really and getting on a bit you know so anyway I reckon I reckon we go for a run now uh, in a sec and then uh, I'll go through some of the components of the engine uh, uh, we haven't had a view over this side beautiful looking thing personally I feel there should be more pipe work because there's just not enough there we go what a thing okay and then here's the uh, the control panel that I made for it so that's uh, I think that's pretty much all the instrumentation that outputs from the engine I've put into the uh, into the control panel I've made there. Let's see, I'll get a bit closer. There we go. So things like oil pressure gauge is weird. It doesn't have an oil pressure gauge. It has a two-stage uh, two-stage oil pressure indicator. So if I power up, oh, helps if I uh, plug in first. Let me do that. You can see I've got two oil pressure lights on. The red one goes out, sorry, the amber one goes out first, then the red one, which is the low pressure. And if you've got, if they stay illuminated and it's running, you've got no oil pressure at all. Anyway, I'll go through that in a minute. So I'm going to have to put my back to you. Uh, oh, this needs, needs a bit more rocky, rocky music on. Hold on. Ah. Bear with me, this is very important. Gotta have the right music. Ah, uh, ah. ah 80s kid, you see. A bit of Howard Jones. Right, let's go for a run. Um, let's swap that round. Right, we'll go for a run and then um, I will go through some of the components of the engine, assuming it all works. Um, and we'll go from there. So thank you for bearing with me. I'm gonna, I've actually got a tripod today, which is like very well prepared to make. So if I put, yeah, uh, okay. That didn't like that. So, so I'm gonna come, I am gonna have my back to you, which is pretty unsociable. So, and right. So what I've got to make clear, this isn't a thrust engine. All the energy that's at the turbine wheel there is designed to be taken out of the shaft right at the front of the engine. So the more gas that comes out the back is a waste of energy. Unlike the turbojet, which is a bit different because it wants volume out the back. But because looking at a jet engine without an afterburner, you may as well look at the photo sometimes. Uh, I have got said over. So, Sedo's pipe, just to prove that there is a gas flow, I've probably covered the screen there. 
Are we all there? Good. Try. Uh, wish me luck. So I'll let that spin down because it's always nice to see a compressor stop. And there you go. So when, it, when the uh, turbines and the compressors spin, you can't see them because of the phasing with the uh, shutter speed of the cameras. And it's only when they stop you can actually see anything. And you can see it there, look. So that's that. So that was the run. So, some little stats there, roughly. Uh, the engine got, engine temperature, EGT, exhaust gas temperature is critical to an engine. 
So, at acceleration, that will go up to about 600, 650 degrees. There you go, some stats that, if it bores you, uh, what the hell. So 650 degrees, but once it gets to that, and because there's no load on it, as in no rotor blades of the helicopter, it goes down to about 300 degrees, which for a jet engine, that's considered pretty good, really. Okay. The, uh, so, um, the power turbine. The power turbine is actually that turbine wheel you can see at the back and that is connected directly to that shaft there that goes to the gearbox that reached 80% of its RPM of course there's no load but that got up to 80% so if that was connected to a helicopter we would have been producing you could argue 800 horsepower at that run that we've just done okay uh, at 80% CPT power turbine the N2 was at 70% and the M1 was at 60, I think, from memory, because uh, it's very short, my memory. So basically, there's no load. So that's why everything looks quite favorable. You start loading the engine, then temperatures go up and pressures go up and all sorts. So that's that. Um, let's just go over a few of the components of the engine. So, starter generator there that starts it and it can turn into a generator i'm just using it as a starter motor over this side throttle control unit like the engine i run yesterday mechanical we all love mechanical this is probably the newest engine i own um uh i think it's made in 1986 um i think when they were new ah, they got to be a million pounds or something stupid anyway anyway so lovely little engine throttle now the thing is with the way that this works is helicopter engines you like to be running at the same speed and the way that you go up and down in a helicopter is by altering the collective which is a pitch of the rotors uh, and as you increase the pitch you get more lift but of course it adds more load so if you add more load to an engine and it's going at 8,000 rpm then it slows down so then we've got this thing at the back and it's like another little throttle lever but that actually is a uh, constant speed governor. So as it, if it drops, you can actually increase, without touching the throttle, you can increase the governor speed, I think. It's, it's probably a bit more complicated than that, but that'll do. Uh, this box here, in theory, is an over temperature control unit. So um, jet engines, a lot like cars really, can get destroyed, or more wear and tear happens at the start when they're cold. So if you can keep that exhaust temperature down, let's say we hit about 650, um, then, then the engine will last on, you know, last long without failing. That is designed to keep the engine temperature under 700 degrees, I think. Um, but manually, I always try and do it myself because I don't want to rely on it because these things are hard to get hold of. Uh, white box, everyone, some of you guys are jet, jet type people. You'll know that's be the HEIU, Energy Ignition Unit. So that produces a spark, that's a nasty little thing. One crack of that and you're dead if you put your hand in the wrong place, that's a bit, a bit nasty. Uh, that little box there, all pressure sender. Uh, if we go around to this side, little things. Sorry, that's the oil pressure sender, oil tank. And we can see that the combustion chamber is a little bit smoky, smoky. Uh, so that's good. Um, what else do we need to do? Oh yeah, as of yes, as same as yesterday, 24 volts, make my own battery pack using uh, aircraft um, uh, Elcon connectors. But I'm also using a golf cart speed controller. Again, uh, these Star Sejenis are like so hard to find, almost impossible actually. And well, you can find them, but they're usually knackered, and the people that sell them want thousands of pounds. So when you get one, and it's a good one, and I bought that and had it serviced, so it's, you know, it's worth keeping. Um, you don't want it to get damaged. So by putting a uh, golf buggy controller on in pump mode, you can limit the amperage because those batteries will put out a thousand amps or thereabouts. And you could put a thousand amps straight into that starter and you know, it will work. It'll start really quick, but ultimately it'll fail. Where at the moment I've got the current limit of the batteries through the speed controller at 450 amps and as you saw it started without any flame or any noticeable flame and it was all quite lovely and hunky-dory so there we go um, fuel so one of my uh, 
Jet Buddies gave me a quick release coupling which saved me taking it apart. That's the fuel line. That goes through a bit of a fuel filter up to the jerry can. That jerry can was full when we started and I reckon I reckon we're still two thirds. So, you know, compared to that engine yesterday, we run not a lot of fuel. So, ah, let's do one more run. Um, and I'll do it from over here maybe. Uh, yeah, one more run and then um, we'll call it a day. Because uh, at the end of the day, you have to try and look after the neighbors, their understanding, because you don't do it all the time, but at the same point, You've got to make the effort. So if I swap that round, pop that in there, or do I do a front? I don't know. What's the best view here? If I put that there. Right. Okay. I presume you're all still with us, we'll go for another run. Uh, and I'll get the hose out, which will be really under, ooh, hello, really underwhelming. But there we go.
There you go. To be fair, I think that's enough for the neighbours today. But, uh, yeah, Rolls Royce Gem. Right. Again, if you notice the hose pipe, yeah, it was blowing it. But most of that energy had been transferred into rotational energy at the shaft output there. So, yeah. So, a few little leakies, again, that's jet engines for you. Right, I might be able to do some questions, but I don't know what the lag on this is like. So is there any questions before I uh, put it to bed? Thank you, LJ. Sounds awesome. Yes, it does. <laughs> I presume that's a joke, Joe. There we go. Right, uh, I guess that'll do for today. Thank you for watching. Hope it wasn't overly boring. I'm not the best at these things. And uh, yeah, so there we go. That's my Rolls Royce gem. At some point, that'll probably end up in a car. Maybe a hybrid electric shaft jet car type thing. I don't know. Uh, something. It's too good not to. Quite hard to come by. So anyway, it's, it's a beautiful thing. On that note, uh, sorry, but I can't really see the screen, so I can't see if anyone's actually saying anything um but thank you for uh, watching hope you're all well i love you all and um uh maybe i'll dig another engine out for half past five tomorrow if we're that way inclined let me know all right stay safe hi bye bye